morning. This is Wednesday, our devotion for Wednesday, March 18th. And uh, I, this morning, what I want to talk about is the issue of peace. I know that a lot of people today are uh, feeling a lot of anxiety. The uh, anxiety about the coronavirus, anxiety about the safety of our children and grandchildren and parents and grandparents and friends. Uh, a lot of anxiety about, about the economy. Uh, there's a lot to fear from the world's perspective. But again, we are not people of fear, we are people of faith. And so I wanna invite you to uh, follow along with me as I read a passage, and I'm gonna break this over two days. Uh, this morning, I'm gonna begin uh, looking at Philippians chapter four. And I'm gonna begin in verse four. And today, I just wanna go through verse seven. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna pick the same passage up in verse eight and following. And talking about God's prescription for, for peace for freedom from anxiety and panic. So I wanna invite you to really try to wrap your heart around this truth today. We read in Philippians 4, 4 through 7, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is a passage that is um, a favorite of many. In fact, uh, according to Amazon, when it comes to, to the Bible, this is the most underlined passage in the entire scripture. It's a passage that people often embrace in times of anxiety and fear. But what I want to do is just take a little deeper look at it here this morning, looking at just the few, first few verses. And the first challenge I want to bring to you is simply this. Embrace the Lord. Come to know God. Open your heart to him. Listen to what it says. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Rejoice in the Lord always. Paul says, I'll say it again, rejoice. Now, notice what Paul is not saying. Paul is not saying rejoice in your circumstances. Rejoice in, in the situation that we find ourselves in today. Rejoice in the coronavirus. Rejoice in the economic trials and, and tribulations that we're facing as a nation. Rejoice that church is not able to gather as we normally would during the course of the week. He's not saying that. He's saying rejoice in the Lord. What he's saying here is look to who God is. Rejoice in who he is. Because, friends, the reality is the more we focus on him, the bigger he becomes and the smaller the fears become in light of his greatness, in light of his goodness, in light of his sovereignty, in light of his nature, in light of his character. Friends, the most important thing that we can do when it comes to fears and worries and anxieties, the best thing that we can do is to grow closer to the Lord, is to trust him even more. Jesus once said, as he gathered children around him, that we need to have the faith of a child. Think about that for a moment. What is the faith of a child like? A, a child trusts. A child has faith. I was thinking about my children when they were learning to swim. And, and uh, as you can imagine, water jumping for a child, jumping in water who can't swim, that's a very scary proposition. But I can remember each of my children. I can remember standing at the side of the pool when they were just, they were just little toddlers. They didn't know how to swim yet. And I can remember with one of my daughters in particular, she, she would jump in and she loved the water and I'd let her go down. And then I'd swoop her up and I'd hold her above me and she would just laugh. It was so fun from her perspective. Now, think about you or me 
not knowing how to swim and jumping into the deep end. And somebody saying, oh, I'll catch you. I'll take care of you. You see, you're not going to jump unless you trust the person who's in the water to catch you. If you don't think that they have the power or the strength to protect you, you're not going to jump. You're not going to trust them. The same is true when it comes to the Lord, when it comes to coronavirus, when it comes to economic trials, when it comes to whatever we're facing in life that is generating and stirring anxiety. We are, our ability to experience peace is a function, literally, of what we believe about God and what we trust is true about him. Now, when I say believe, I also mean trust. It's not enough to just say God's in charge, God loves me. The question is, do you really believe that? Rejoice in the Lord. Always, I will say it again. Rejoice, Paul writes. What he's saying is rejoice in the nature of God. Rejoice in who God is. That is the greatest prescription for dealing with worry and fear and anxiety is knowing God and coming to him from the perspective of that of a child. Knowing that I can jump into his arms and he will catch me. Now that doesn't mean that we're never gonna suffer in this world. No, it's not what he's saying. What he's saying is ultimately, ultimately, he can be trusted. Even in the heartache, even in the struggle, he can be trusted. Even in death, we have nothing to fear, even in death, for we belong to him now and forevermore. And then here is the second part of that great passage. In verses 6 and 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So what the Lord is asking us to do is as we rejoice in him, as we're reminded of the nature and character of God, as we come to him with faith and trust, then we present to him the requests, the needs, the struggles <clears throat> that we have. We say, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Bring your needs, your requests, your fears, your anxieties. Bring them all before the Lord with thanksgiving. Now, I think that is something that we often forget to do. Why is Thanksgiving so important? Because when I bring my needs to God with Thanksgiving, I'm reminding myself of God's faithfulness in the past. And as God has been faithful in the past, I have the confidence he's gonna be faithful in the present. And so I come before the Lord and I say, God, as an act of trust, I'm bringing before you the needs that I have today. Now here's the promise of God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, not your peace that we can generate in this world. You see, the problem with the peace that the world offers, it's all about your circumstances. If things are good, I'm at peace. If things are bad, I don't have peace. And this is what we see happening in our world and our community today among those who do not ultimately believe. But we, we believe. And Jesus says that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, all human understanding. In other words, from somebody from the outside of faith, it doesn't make sense to them how we can be at, at peace. And the reason it doesn't make sense to them is that kind of peace is not available to them because their peace is rooted in the circumstances of life. Our peace is not. Our peace is rooted in the nature of God. And as we come to him, knowing that he hears our prayers, God comes. It doesn't say here that he changes our circumstances. What it says is that his peace comes and it guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And I love that word guard. The word guard means this. Like a sentry, God is coming to stand at our heart and our mind. And he is protecting us. He's protecting us from our own thoughts. He's protecting us from our own fears. 
So here's my encouragement to you today. Reflect on the nature of God. Reflect on who God is. And then second, my encouragement to you today is this. Come to him. Bring your needs and your fears and anxieties before him. And as those thoughts of fear come and attack you, continue to release them to the Lord. Let's pray together. Our Father, we are so grateful for who, we, who you are. Thank you for um, being a God who is sovereign over all things, for being a God who is always good, for being a God who is perfect in love, perfect in justice, who is perfect in all things. Lord, in light of who you are, we bring our fears and insecurities to you. We bring our fears of the coronavirus and our fears for our children, for our parents, for our brothers and our sisters, for our friends, for our neighbors, for those in our church, for those in our world. We bring all of these fears before you. We bring our economic fears to you and we give them to you. And we say, oh, Jesus, come grant us your peace now and forevermore. Lord, thank you for the amazing God that you are. Thank you for the peace and the joy that is ours in Christ. And we ask that you would just be a sentry, a guard at our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen.